Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Susan Kresnica. I run the Research and Insights uh, team at Troika. And I'm Flourish Klink. Uh, I'm the partner of Research and Insights at Chaotic Good Studios. Uh, I help franchises rethink their relationship to fans. And I'm Reed Thompson, uh, creative director at Troika uh, with Culture Brands. And uh, really, we're here to talk about fans and brands. So to kick it off, we thought we'd share a short film uh, that really looks at the changing state of the uh, entertainment landscape, but also uh, how fans are starting to really drive, um, drive innovative brands. So kick it off. So you can see our interest in fandom fairly clearly from the video. And we are here to talk about fans and brands today. But I actually would like to start with a bit of a confession. And I'd like to confess to you that I am in love. And I'm not in love with a person, or at least not one person. I'm in love with a show. I love the show Supernatural. Now, this, I know, right? Um, <laughs> this started for me a couple of years ago when my daughter, who was about 12 at the time, had entered that phase of her teenage years where she had basically stopped responding in anything but one word answers and would only roll her eyes at me when I asked her something. And it was a really difficult time and about the only thing she would talk to me about at length was the show Supernatural, which she had discovered with her friends through Netflix. And she would go on and on in excruciating levels of detail about each episode. And I would stand there just trying to make sense of it all. Finally, she said to me one day, would you please just watch the pilot with me and know what's going on here, get the basics. So I said yes. 
And since that day, we have watched every episode together, and I would like to remind everyone that that show just finished its 13th season. Um, I've watched many episodes multiple times. We have been to a convention together and are headed to another one this year. We have bought matching t-shirts and cell phone covers. We've baked sigil cookies. We've traded videos and memes. We do all of that. And mostly, that shared fandom for Supernatural has helped us navigate a very difficult time in, uh, in our relationship with one another. But lest you think this fandom thing is all about me just trying to stay close to her during a difficult set of years, um, I'd like to correct you and let you know that I'm actually in it for myself as well. I choose to watch those episodes over and over again, even when I'm alone. And when one of the boys dies, which they do on a regular basis, my heart freezes just a little bit. And when I hear the opening notes to Carry On My Wayward Son, I tear up because I'm actually a fan myself. And um, so I have now confessed, I've caught to you my middle-aged supernatural fandom, and I now ask you to think about something for a moment. I'd love for you to think about whether you are or have ever been a fan of anything. And I'd like you to try to remember the most intense feeling you've ever had being a fan. <laughs> whether that was a positive moment or a difficult moment, if you've ever been a fan, you know the intensity with which fandom can make you feel. And that's really what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about what it means to be building our businesses on such intense emotional terrain. Um, so I'm an anthropologist, as many of you know, and I, in the course of my work in the entertainment industry, I've had the opportunity to study specific types of fans many times on behalf of our clients. Right now, we're in the middle of conducting a year-long study of fandom at Troika, a very broad study. It's taken on from a number of research methodologies, and we're just at the beginning. We're about three months in, but we do have some findings emerging. And one of the very first things we learned in a very uh, sort of small quantitative survey that we kicked the study off with is that 85% of American adults consider themselves to be fans of something. Now, they can be fans of lots of different things. They can be fans of a book, or a team, or a band, or a video game, or a show, um, or even a hobby, or a brand, or even a product. And yes, this is true. There are fans of candles, and they have a name. They're called Fandles. <laughs> Not even kidding. And we call this thing that anything that someone is a fan of, we call it an oof. It's short for object of fandom, and it's like any other object of affection. And just as oofs take many forms, fans themselves take many forms, the type of fan that you can be. There are, um, there are affirmational fans, and affirmational fans are those who are very concerned with knowledge acquisition. They're very concerned with the sanctity of the original story. These are the types of fans who seek out every bit of knowledge they can acquire. They're the, they're the fans who feel like they should know everything that there is to know about the things that they love. These are the fans who use surveillance, um, surveillance equipment to try to identify and spoil the next location of the next season of Survivor. These are the fans who set up wiki pages and maintain them for you because they care so much about keeping and chronicling all that information. Um, they are often interested in arguing about the exact details of a story, and they actually will see a departure from the original story as heresy. And then there's a different type of fan. There are transformational fans, which is a very different way of being a fan. It's much more about using the original material as a starting point for your own creativity. These are fans who write fan fiction and make fan works and they make fan edits based on, on the original source material, turning it into a completely new story, exploring completely new dimensions of characters. Um, these are really fearless and creative fans who are willing to explore almost anything in what they create. There's almost nothing too mundane or too taboo for transformational fans. Now, that begs the question, what about all those other people out there, those other fans, who may not have a specific profile that we can identify as easily? 
You know, sometimes you'll hear these fans called casual fans, and I think that's a really dangerous label because it allows us to believe that they care less just because we can't see their digital footprint of fandom quite as readily. But these fans can care just as deeply as those who are behaving in really pronounced ways um, on, on the internet and in other places where we can observe them. And so we're holding off until we can tell you a little bit more about the full range of fans um, that, that we can identify in our study. No matter what type of fan we're talking about, the connection is essentially the same. It's a connection that's based on love. And whether we're rattling off the stats of our favorite team or writing fan fiction about a show or simply getting through a very difficult day by looking forward to the latest episode of a show that we're a fan of, it's the same feeling. It is a feeling of love. So what we're saying here is that fans are in a relationship. And they're in a relationship with those who create the things they love. But the thing about relationships, and we all know this, is that we don't like for them to be unidirectional. We want them to be mutual. And for a very long time, fans have had a very difficult time creating a mutual relationship with those who um, make the things that they love, which, by the way, they call the powers that be. Oops, and am I skipping? Yes, sorry, I skipped. Mm -hmm. um, the powers of be, basically, that's all of us in this room. And um, for a very long time, it was difficult for fans to have that relationship. But now, as we all know so well, it's really easy. They can communicate with us directly, and they can tell us how they feel about things. And that need for a mutual, <laughs> mutual relationship is coming to the fore. Um, so we're in a relationship, and the question really becomes, what kind of relationship do we want it to be? Do we want it to be a one-night stand? I seriously think not. I think we're looking for an enduring relationship between ourselves and those who love the things that we make so much. We're looking for a relationship that's based on a mutual concern for the thing that we care about. It's a little bit like being parents, okay? Bear with me, bear with me. It's as if those who create the content and the stories, it, it's as if that's the parent who gave birth, right? They gave birth and they brought this story baby into the world. The fans kind of like the other parent who watches this new being come to life, lays eyes on it and sees themselves reflected in it and then dedicates themselves to that baby's success and survival. And fans from that first instant, they will shower that, that thing that they love with affection. They'll share baby photos with anybody who will look they will protect it and defend it from those who criticize or try to harm it. But as we all know, if anyone's a parent in this room, we can surely tell, we all certainly know that if you are parenting with another person, you don't always agree about how to achieve the success for that thing that you both care about so much, right? You have to work on that relationship. So, um, one of the other things that we know so well is that that relationship can be difficult at times. It's, it can be stressful. And when we think about what it means to be establishing a healthy relationship, um, we have to actually be aware that when we don't agree, we've got to work through it. Right now, any, any of us who have contentious relationships with fans know how difficult it can be to not agree. And I think we need to remember that even in the most difficult times with fans, we have to remind ourselves that the opposite of love is not hate, it's actually indifference. And so when our fans are making, uh, are criticizing the way we're going about things or have differences of opinion with how we're um, navigating a story, we have to remember that at least they care. And we have to use that as a platform for the development and, the f and furthering that relationship with one another. So that is actually what we are going to talk about next. We are going to talk about how we can maintain a healthy relationship between ourselves and our fans and keep ourselves out of divorce court. <laughs> so every good relationship requires understanding, and understanding requires some work. So for example, Cosmo negotiated a year-long partnership with Magic Mike. Seems like a no-brainer, their brands are totally aligned, but just the alignment of brands isn't enough. So they reached out directly to fans, asking them about their fantasies, some of which I'm sure were very surprising. But the point is they're gonna be able to create the best content that speaks directly to Magic Mike fans this way. 
Building trust, it takes time to do it, but it's worth it. And when I say building trust, it's not just high quality content, although that's important. It's the little things. So Disney's content is important, but more than that, the way they interact with fans, the way they consistently treat them with respect and elevate them has built this level of trust where fans will follow them even if they seem like they're going somewhere strange. Even key art can begin building trust. So the Gilmore Girls revival was exciting but scary to fans. What if they're gonna change it? And this key art very clearly begins to communicate, no, this is the same Gilmore Girls, we know what you love about it and we're going to continue that. So fans and the powers that be have very different relationships to the object of fandom, as Susan was saying, but that doesn't mean they can't mutually respect each other. So this next clip comes from an episode of Supernatural, where the lead character, Dean, encounters a fan who's written a musical about his exploits. You know, this has been educational, seeing the story from your perspective. You keep writing, Shakespeare. Even if it doesn't match how you see it? I have my version and you have yours. So one of the great things about this clip is Supernatural actually tried to incorporate fans into the show several times and got it wrong and heard back from their fans that the fans didn't like it. But it built great respect that Supernatural went back and tried to do it again listening to the critique and they finally got it right in this episode and it blew it out of the water. So this is a great example of healthy communication which we all know is the bedrock of a relationship. MTV's Teen Wolf does a great job of running their Twitter like a human beings. They're operational 365 days a year. They engage with fans directly and personally. They aren't always perfect. They've made some missteps. But when they do, fans are more willing to forgive because they feel like humans, you know? You can forgive someone who's, who's a person. Now, in good relationships, you can't give someone roses on Valentine's Day and then expect them to do your laundry and cook you dinner all year round. So fans are aware of the exploitative way they can be dealt with, and they want you to show your appreciation in valuable ways. Outlander's website is great at this. They include annotated scripts and storyboards, things fans normally never get to see, and crucially, things that Outlander fans specifically want. Another tack, the Hannibal Tumblr consistently reblogs beautiful fan art. By supporting this really important and active part of their fandom, they've kept the fire burning for Hannibal even now, years after cancellation. I bet they're coming back. And of course, the sky's the limit when it comes to declarations of love. At last year's Comic-Con, Star Wars had it made. They just had to show up to Hall H and play some Force Awakens clips, and fans would have been thrilled. But they took it another step further, took fans outside, had a private concert and a fireworks show, and everybody who was in the room that night will never forget what happened. So finally, it's really important to do what's fun for both you and the fans. No one wants to be in a relationship that isn't fun. For instance, Fox crossed over Sleepy Hollow and Bones one night. Uh, it was hilarious, and as a Sleepy Hollow fan, I was thrilled. I had recently actually finished writing a Sleepy Hollow elementary crossover fanfic novel. I'm not kidding. And here they were playing with the same ideas. Um, and I think we'll skip this next thing because it'll take too long. But uh, summary is, uh, Showing your fans you're thinking of them in hilarious <laughs> ways. Uh, oh, God, yeah, I'm going to do that, isn't it? Hamilton, it's great. They constantly post these tiny vines, which are fun and quick, and, and just get the job done. So if we're going to be in a relationship, what does this mean uh, for our future? Uh, you know, I think uh, the fans are going to take these um, objects of fandom into their own hands and make what they will. Uh, even so much as uh, hiring professionals, this, this is a Kickstarter for the Star Trek Axanar, a new chapter in the story, uh, and they uh, crowdfunded. I, they wanted ten thousand dollars, and I think they ended up getting nearly a hundred thousand dollars to start making their own films. Uh, you know, so if we, if we band together uh, as, as marketers, you know, I think there's a couple of ways that we can really start to understand fans better and appreciate them. Uh, starting with rethinking marketing briefs, you know, really getting away from this traditional numbers and, and uh, demos, really moving into a true understanding, less about age and race and gender, and more about really the identity, the things that um, really are true understandings of fans, why we connect with those objects. Uh, and then creating fan toolkits uh, are really important. Take it, you know, take, uh, make them a part of the creative process. You know, this is uh, for Magic the Gathering. Uh, they put out a fan toolkit with logos in multiple uh, languages. They give you keyable, um, keyable, keyable uh, character images as well as uh, background images. So whether you're affirmational or transformational, uh, really you can be a part of creating the, the marketing around the brand itself. 
Uh, so, you know, we're in this relationship. Uh, it's something really, uh, we're moving from transactional relationships with brands. It's no longer a one-way street, as Susan said. Uh, and we need to really open up and be, uh, and create these really emotional connections because, you know, it's really um, an exciting time to understand fandom. Uh, and we, together, we can be powerful. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, and uh, I guess with that, uh, and uh, you know, we're really, as you can tell, excited about the power of fandom, the possibilities for brands and fans, uh, and you know, if we're in a relationship, what's not to love? Uh, we encourage it. So. <laughs>